It's time for a new season. It's time for a change. It's time for a transition. This week, we're talking about transition of mission. Hey everybody, my name's Cody Ray. Thanks for clicking on this video. Uh, I I know that God's gonna speak to you through this time that we get to spend together. Um, And and I have an important message that that I wanna share with you that I think is going to encourage you for not only today, but for a long time um, as as God is working in our lives and as he continues to move and and shift things around for us. There's a lot of change happening. A, A lot of our seniors, uh, are graduating this week or next week and and we're just so excited for you guys and and the accomplishment that that you've achieved uh, over the last several years to to get to this point uh, and we're we're pumped for you um, this week we're we're calling this message transition of mission and, and I believe this works for if you're a graduating senior, if, if you're still in middle school, still in high school, or if you've been working for a long time, it, I, I think this message is for everybody. Um, speaking of graduation, though, I, I remember I always had a tough time with graduation. Now, uh, it, it wasn't because I didn't get good grades, although I was part I was a student that made it possible for other students to be in the top half of the class Um, but and and it wasn't that I got emotional at graduation I I don't I'm not much of a crier Uh, it just sometimes happens that that my eyes sweat at the wrong times Um, so so none of those were the problems the problem that I had with with every one of the graduations that I was part of I was part of three is I was never able to fit the graduation cap on my head. Uh, I mean, I've been known to carry a large melon on my shoulders and uh, a couple, uh, couple that with uh, the amount of hair that I have. There's no way that that piece of cardboard was going to sit on my dome for a graduation ceremony. Uh, that it, it was just not going to happen. Uh, but that hat that cap and the tassel on there is something so special the 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 switching of the tassel is is something that symbolizes a transition it it symbolizes uh, a, a transition of mission a transition from this journey now you're going on another journey um and and it's it's very significant in in what's happening there and as you know, there, there's so much transition happening in our world right now. Uh, there's transition of priorities happening right now. There's transitions of seasons of life. Those of you that are graduating, some of you are changing jobs. Some of you, there's just a lot of transition happening. But one thing that we know and, and what we're talking about is this transition of mission. So a mission that is successful um, is one that continues after there is a change that has occurred. So when we change something, if the mission stays intact, we know that we had a successful transition of that mission. Uh, School is about to finish for many of you, uh, and you're gonna transition into a summertime, a a break time. Um, And and yeah, it doesn't look like we thought it would um, at the beginning of the school year, how this end is going to look like the summer is going to look a lot different than what we anticipated. The, the way that you go to work is going to continue to look different and, and we're figuring all that out. Um, but during this time and during all the time is how, how are you growing? How are you transitioning yourself? How are you, uh, becoming a better you? How, how, do you have somebody mentoring you? Do you have somebody discipling you? Do you have somebody that you're pouring into and, and helping to change their life a little bit? We must always be growing and learning. This is something that that we have to continue to do if we want to continue to lead, if we want to continue to live. Um, we have to be learning, be growing. 
So whether you're graduating uh, from high school and going into uh, another field, maybe you're going to college, maybe you're going to work, maybe you're going to armed forces, um, you always have to be growing. You always have to be learning. You always have to be a student and a teacher at the same time. Um, and and there was this weird uh, transition, this this kind of cool transition. We talk, we we move the tassel from one side to the other, um, and and in the Bible that sort of happened just with a different piece of material, uh, and and that's what I want to talk about today. There's this guy named Elijah, and he was a prophet, and he, I mean this dude was bad, and and when I say bad, I mean like awesome, like he 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 was a hairy dude. And the first time that we see him, he's he's described as this hairy guy. He walks into the presence of a king and says, it's not going to rain for years. Like, we're going to be in a drought. And then he just walks out. Like, this dude was bad. And, and this guy was fed by birds. Birds would bring him his lunch and, and wherever he was. Um, he, he was the guy that had a bunch of people pour water on this altar and then call fire from heaven and the whole thing burned up and and there was 400 prophets of Baal and and they were trying to get fire to come from heaven and he said whoever can do it their God is real and and of course Elijah was praying to our God and and fire came down and and just burnt the whole thing up and he slaughtered those 400 prophets like it's just just crazy story about what he did and then after he does all of this he gets a message from this evil queen and she says, I'm going to kill you for what you just did to all of my prophets. And he freaks out and runs away. Like he just did this amazing thing. And then all of a sudden he gets scared and runs away. And after a little while, we find Elijah hiding in a cave. He's just hanging out in this cave um, in this place that God didn't tell him to go to. Um, and he's kind of just off of his journey and and not not transitioning well from this amazing event that happened to what's next for him and so god finds him in this cave and and he talks to him and he says this in first kings chapter 19 uh starting in verse 9 it says what are you doing here elijah God is asking Elijah this question, and, and Elijah responds this way. He says, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Have you ever thought that you were the only one trying to walk this journey? You thought you were the only one that, that was struggling with what you're struggling with, that, that you were going through this hard time, that you thought you were the only one that was experiencing the pain that you might have been going through. That's what Elijah is saying right here. And, and he wasn't the only one. He's about to find that out. God's going to let him know. And and God is is saying, all right. Let me give you a second chance to answer that question. What are you doing here, Elijah? And and he says, go out to the mouth of the cave and, and you're going to hear my voice. And this crazy wind comes by and God wasn't in that. An earthquake shakes the whole place and God wasn't in that, given his message. A fire comes and God's not in that. And then it says that God came in a whisper, in, in a gentle voice, in, in a peace and quiet God comes and he asks him again he says what are you doing here Elijah and Elijah answers the question the same way he did before and God says okay in verse 15 he says go back the way you came I'm about to show you something and go to the desert of Damascus when you get there anoint Haziel king of Aram, also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel, and anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat. Verse 17, Jehu will put to death all those who escape, Haziel and Elisha, they'll put to death anybody who escapes the sword of Jehu. Verse 18, yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel. You thought you were the only one, but actually, 
There's thousands of prophets. There's thousands that are following my ways, that are doing what I'm asking them to do. There's, there's thousands of people carrying out this mission that I have set before you. You're not alone. And he says, okay, I'm going to transition you. And I'm, I want you to go anoint these people. I want you to lay hands on these people. And I want you to empower them to carry out this mission because you are not alone. The, the, the mission is just in transition now. And it's about to spread like you've never seen before. All whose knees have not bowed down to Baal and whose mouths have not kissed him. 7,000 of you. He says, things are only getting started. We're only at the beginning of what you're about to see. And, and so he goes, he anoints all his people, and, and he calls Elisha. So we have Elijah and Elisha. And, and he, he gets to Elisha, and, and he finds him plowing a field. And, and in uh, verse 19 of chapter 19, it says, So Elijah went there, found Elisha, he was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the 12th pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. So Elijah walks up to this guy. He's plowing a field, and, and Elisha is behind 12 pair of oxen, just looking at their rears, smelling what comes out of them. And, and he's in this weird spot, but he's doing his job. And he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. And Elijah or Elijah comes, throws his cloak over him. And this is a symbol that things are about to change. This is, this is a, a, a metaphor of come follow me, be my disciple, learn from me because your mission is now in transition. You're, the way that you're doing things, the, the way that, that uh, you used to do things was a setup for what's going to happen now. It's a transition of the mission that you are already carrying out. And so uh, then we we fast forward. Elisha spends uh, a number of years with Elijah, learning from him, seeing all kinds of miracles happen through him. Um, and everybody knows now that Elijah is going to be taken away. He, he's uh, eventually going to uh, die whether they think that, whether they knew that he was going to be carried off. Um, but one thing that happens is Elijah asks Elisha, what can I do before I'm taken away? What can I do for you before uh, our relationship is separated and I am no more? And Elisha asked for a double portion of Elijah's spirit. So he's asking everything that you have done, everything that all the miracles that you've done, all the wisdom that you have, I want a double portion of what it is that you have. I've followed you. It's like I'm your firstborn son. I want that inheritance. And then after this happens, almost immediately, Elijah is carried into heaven on a chariot of fire. It's one of the coolest things that had to have been seen. Um, and in 2 Kings chapter 2, uh, starting in verse 13, this is what happens. Elisha then picked up Elijah's cloak. Remember, Elijah threw it on Elisha when they first met Elisha's call. And he said, you're in transition of mission. Uh, Elijah's cloak that had fallen from him and went and stood on the bank of the Jordan. So Elijah's carried off into heaven. His cloak falls from where he was in the sky. Elijah's watching him go up, up, up until he can't see him anymore. And then his cloak falls. Elisha picks it up. It says he took the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah? He asked. When he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left, and he crossed over. And so what had happened is Elijah and Elisha cross the Jordan River. They have this conversation. They cross on dry ground. Elijah takes this cloak, strikes the water. The water splits. They walk across the Jordan, just those two. And they have this conversation. What do you want, Elisha, before I'm taken away from you? And he says, I want the double portion. And then he's taken away. And now Elisha is by himself 
on the other side of the Jordan when he has prophets on the other side and he needs to get back. The cloak falls down. He picks it up and he says, did I get what I has asked for? Did I get the double portion from Elijah's spirit? He picks up the cloak. He strikes the water. It splits again. He walks back to the people and the people that are there say he has the spirit. The spirit of Elijah is resting on Elisha. The transition of the mission has taken place. And it says they went to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. It, it's a transition. It's, it's moving the tassel from one side to the other. It's, it's the completion of somebody's journey and now it's continuing with somebody else. It, it's the completion of what you have known for a long time into something different into something greater into a double portion of what you have been set up for beforehand see there are going to be times of transition that we need to figure out some new things and, and we are going to learn a lot of new things and and there's a time where we're going to have to give up some things that we had in the past and, and sometimes it can be bittersweet to, to go through change and, and to go through this transition. But a lot more times, it's, it's more sweet than it is bitter. And, and that's what's happening. So seniors, you, you've been going on this journey for the last 12, 13 years uh, of what you knew. And, and, and you got comfortable in this and... and it's not a bad thing. You you did what you were asked to do. You were plowing the fields. You were doing the homework. You were doing all of those things. And now it's time for you to receive that double portion, that transition of mission into maybe college, maybe the workforce, maybe armed forces, maybe something else that God has in store for you that he's been telling you about. And, and, and yeah, it doesn't look the way that we thought the finish line was going to look. But as I was thinking about this and, and hearing some other people talk about this, the starting line for you guys was not that great either. You guys w were brought into this world, into this mission, in a time of huge transition in our country. With 9-11, you guys were born right after that happened and, and a lot of changes happened during the time that you were brought into the world. and And so... I don't know what this means completely other than you guys are, are a class that, that knows how to overcome adversity, that knows how to overcome obstacles, that, that knows how to get through tough times, things that are different that, that nobody else has experienced before. And, and you are going to continue to do that and continue to fight for just levels of improvement and excellence and, and, and all of that stuff. You're a class that overcomes adversity and, and maybe in your jobs, you, you've been working in a job for a number of years and now things are shifting and, and it's just an opportunity for you to receive a double portion of something greater, something new, something, a, a transition of mission of what I went through the last 12 years is going to set me up for what's going to happen for the next 12 years. And, and it's this, this transition that is happening. If you want to stay growing, you have to stay learning. Pour into yourself. Learn from other people. And at the same time, pour into somebody else. And, and transition the knowledge that you have. What comes to you goes through you. We talk about this all the time. Your mission is in transition and you are ready for more. And so as we continue to navigate this change and transition uh, of what's happening, I want to leave us with the prayer that Jesus prayed when he was transitioning his mission. He's uh, praying right before he's about to get crucified. And, and he says these words. It's in John chapter 17. It says, I have given them your word. Jesus is praying to God. And the word, I've given them your word and the world has hated them for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. 
We're not just trying to get out of adversity. We're not just trying to uh, escape obstacles. We're going to face them head on as we continue to move. Verse 16, they are not of this world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Verse 18, here's what I want you to pay attention to. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. It's a transition. They've watched me for years, and now it's time for them to carry on the mission. My mission is coming to a close, he says, and they're going to be the ones that are developing disciples. It's a transition of mission, and that's what we're going through right now. And, and, and it's just going to be even greater on the other side. Transition well, and you will see a double portion, an, an increase, a, a next level of life if you continue to walk in this way. So turn your tassel, take up your cloak, and, and press on with this mission. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we love you, we praise you for what it is that you're doing. We thank you for times of transition. Even though steps can be uncertain, God, we know that you are going to be with us every step of the way. God, we want to celebrate the seniors that are graduating. Uh, we, we want to pray for those that are going through transitions of jobs and things like that. And, and, and God, we just pray as we enter a time uh, of summer break that that we use that time to pour into ourselves to pour into other people god we thank you for what you're doing in our lives fill us with courage fill us with boldness fill us with with wisdom and and we just praise you for what you're doing thank you for using us in this mission we thank you and love you it's in jesus name that we pray this amen thank you for joining us for elevates weekly message we're praying that this empowers you to seek his kingdom first. Stay tuned on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube for more content coming daily.